really inspired. I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get another video out to you guys. I've been working very hard on my blog. And thank you for stopping by and visiting me and saying hi and saying all those lovely comments. I read every one of them, and so I'm so glad you guys are getting out there and doing your own projects. That is so cool. Today we are going to do a clutch purse, which looks very difficult to do, but actually very simple. It's really just straight stitching. Uh, what we do inside is we do, this is the first one that I ever made, and it probably took me about 45 minutes to an hour to make it, so really not that bad, but you do want to, you got to let the glue dry overnight, that's key to making sure it lasts a long time. And inside what we're going to do, I'm um, not sure if you can see it, but I'll show it to you in detail, it's called a French seam. And it's basically where you hide your work. You hide all those seams that you don't really want to see when you open your purse. So, But it's very cool, very easy. I'm also going to tell you um, what you need for this project. This mechanism, this clasp mechanism, is really key to this pattern because uh, a lot of mechanisms you'll see in the craft stores, they have it goes on to the sides of the fabric also, whereas this one just has a channel. You can see just two channels for a straight stitched fabric to fit into. So that's going to be key. And the only place I have found these is on Etsy. So I'll share that website with you. And they're, they're made in Hong Kong, so they do cost a lot to ship. So you're going to want you know, if you're going to make five of these, go ahead and order five clasps at the same time so you're not constantly reordering and shipping and all of that stuff. So you're going to need one of these. Again, I'll tell you the size. You're going to need some interfacing, and I use a medium weight interfacing. Then you're going to need some fusible fleece. This is the stuff that has the glue on the back. Remember before we, we made our e-reader, we used the same product. And what we're going to do is iron it. So you, you need to make sure you get the fusible kind that is heat sensitive. So when we put our iron on it, it'll go ahead and adhere. And I chose these really springy fabrics. I thought they were kind of fun. Over in here in Kentucky, we have the Kentucky Derby coming up. So it kind of reminded me of that. I thought it would look really cool with a fabulous dress, maybe green. Um, so this is going to be my outer fabric. And then this polka dot is going to go for the lining, so to be inside. That is all you need. And really, if you're getting the fabric cut, go ahead and do 3 eighths, excuse me, 3 eighths uh, measurement is really all you need. And um, the other thing, you don't want to wash this fabric before you use it. You just want to go ahead and use it right off the bolt because... Um, First of all, you're never going to throw your clutch purse in the washer, so that's not a concern that it might shrink. The other thing is, it has a little bit more weight to it sometimes when it comes right off the bolt. Um, you, you just don't want to put it in the washing machine. You do want to iron it, make sure it's nice and flat, and that's all you really need. And also, welcome to my new studio. I painted it. <laughs> so, um, let's get started. Our first step is going to be to take our lining fabric and on the wrong side of the fabric we're going to iron the interfacing. Obviously the glue part we want to stick to this wrong side of the fabric. So we're going to iron that good, make sure that's sticking, and then go back and iron the fusible fleece on top of that. Now, it, you just don't want it to shift too much. It doesn't need to be really tight adhered, but you really want it to have some stick to it. I've ironed the interfacing to my liner fabric, and I've ironed this fusible. And you see, you do have to use some pressure and heat uh, with this, but most of it is stuck, you can see. So what we're going to do now is put your right sides together and you're going to sew a straight stitch on the longest sides. Remember our fabric was cut 13 and a half by 13. 
you're going to stitch After the you longer have sewn side. your straight stitch, you're going to want to go in and cut as close as you can to that line of thread that you just sewed because this is eventually what is going to be laying in this channel uh, of our clasp. So you want it to be a nice so clean edge. So we have our straight stitch down both sides. We're going to take this, put your hand in there, turn it inside out. Actually, turn it right side out. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so you see where I'm going here. This has to be completely flat. So what we're going to do is take our iron and make sure that this top and bottom are completely flat so you have a nice flat edge. Did I say flat enough times? I have to work the iron a little bit and maneuver it to get this seam and this piece very flat and that's normal, that's okay. Just um, keep working your iron. Now what we're going to do is we are going to make it look like our clutch a little bit more and we're going to fold it so that your lining fabric is inside. See that? Fold it and we're going to make a stitch, straight stitch on both sides. You want to use a regular, I guess that's 5 eighths inch. I'm not sure of the, um, I just follow my little guide there on my sewing machine, but I think it's 5 eighths inch. Uh, just make a stitch because what we're eventually going to do is turn it inside out again, stitch, and then again. So I will show you each step, but you're going to want, I use paper clips to hold while I sew because sometimes a pin will make it pucker. So what we're going to do is just paper clip it to keep it so that your top edge is always straight because this is eventually what is going to hold our mechanism. I know, it's just so cool. So get some paper clips out and clip this, and then make your straight stitch. So our straight stitch down the sides, and it's looking really good. The next thing you're going to want to do, which is key to this clutch to making it look really professional, is you're going to cut as close as you can to that seam that you just sewed. So, because there's a lot of turning inside and out, and you need these, these seams to be as narrow as they can be. So what I've done is I've clipped all of my seam allowance. I'm also going to clip my quarters. This is going to be really hard to do the first time because you've worked so hard, but believe me, this is what you need to do. So you clip your quarter corners, okay? Not a lot, just clip it so when you turn it, it's going to make a nice flat edge. We're going to turn it again. Okay, so now your outside fabric is going to be on your inside. Obviously, your lining fabric will be on the outside. This is looking so cute for spring. I'm actually making this one for an auction item for a local church. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to iron this flat needs to be really flat again and I'm going to stitch this side again as close to the edge as I can okay and then we're going to turn it inside so out so we again. turned our clutch purse right side out again what we're going to do now is cut the corners you're going to create what's called a gusset um, it's basically cutting the corners so the purse will sit straight this, this I read about 400 times before I actually did it because I wanted to be sure I was cutting the right corner and cutting it correctly. Um, so believe me, you need to do it, but I know it'll take a little courage after you've gotten this far. I understand that. I've been there. Okay, so what we're going to do is, is take your clutch as it should be, pull, put your fingers in so the corners go all the way out. Do you see how I'm kind of getting them to lay flat, the corners? where your seams are and everything. You're going to take your measuring tape and at two inches, you're going to measure this way across, two inches. Okay? 
and you're going to draw a line. I use my invisible marking pen just so I see where my line is. Mine is obviously dry, but I can see it. Okay, so you're going to do that on both corners. You're going to measure two inches across and then right do your line there. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to sew there. So what I usually do is I iron this really flat so it'll go through the machine nicely. And then I'm going to sew a straight stitch so right where my line is. And I'm going to cut again as close to that seam as I can. I know this is going to be hard to do the first time. Have courage in your sewing. Okay, cut, cut that corner off like it's your job, ladies and gentlemen. Um, okay, we're going to cut this off. Helps to have sharp scissors. We're going to turn it again. Okay, so your right side's going to go inside again. Look at that beautiful seam. And you're going to, again, use your iron. Push these seams out as far as you can. Use your iron. Flatten this. And sew again that straight seam so that when you turn it inside out, right side out, it's going to have a nice, beautiful seam on the outside. The other thing I wanted to mention about this project is it really does help to have a fresh needle on your sewing machine because if you're anything like me, I don't change mine until it breaks. And it does help because you've got a lot to sew through with all this batting and everything. So we've done our straight stitch. We're going to turn it for the final time. Yay! And this is where we're going to have to let it sit um, with our glue on it. You can trim all your stuff off there. Looks so cute. What I usually do now is I'll iron it so it's nice and flat. And then um, we're going to put some glue. And what I use is this uh, Gem Tack. It's a permanent adhesive. And it works great for this application because... It dries clear. You do want to be careful. You don't get it all over the place, but it does dry clear. So what we're going to do after I iron this is put a bead of glue in your channels here. Open this up. Put a bead of glue. And then you're going to fit this fabric right in between those, those channels. Okay? It takes a little bit of maneuvering and patience, like with anything, right? anything that's worth doing. <laughs> so um, after you have it set, this glue is not a fast drying glue, but you're going to want to tape it, put a piece of scotch tape, and just leave it overnight. Just leave it. Let it dry good and hard. When this dries, these will obviously stick to this. This inverts, and then you tuck this fabric in. So your fabric will be tucked. You're going to want to make sure once you glue, which I just did, I glued this, you're going to want to make sure it's even in the middle of the clutch on both sides. There's the same amount of fabric. If your glue seeps out a little bit, just wipe it with your finger. Try to get it off as best you can. You can always clean it up later with some solvent. Just Try not to get too many drips. And that's it. We're going to let it sit I hope overnight. you enjoyed this craft today, and I hope that you go out and make one for yourself. If you do, please share it with us on Facebook at Cleverly Inspired or Twitter. Um, I also ask if you do repost this on your blog or do anything else with this information, that you go ahead and credit back Cleverly Inspired uh, to where you learned it. That would be great. And... Keep watching because we have lots of fun stuff coming up. And thanks for coming. See ya.